It was during the heyday of the lumber schooners that this trail was built. Most of the vessels wrecked were bound for the sheltered waters of Puget Sound, but missed the entrance to the Strait of Juan de Fuca. For the sake of survivors, a telephone line first was strung along the shore. Later, a trail was marked and the cabins built. By the 1920s, bridges and the cable crossings were in. The trail was continually maintained. Then, with the coming of radar, shipwrecks lessened and maintenance diminished. Today, it's again on the upswing since this part of the coast is included in the new Pacific Rim National Park. Evidence of early day construction is this rusting donkey engine. It dates from 1907, when efforts were made to build a road south from Banfield. That failed, but because of the work, the trail here is wide. From his earlier hikes, Chess remembers the location of a shipwreck, and we walk out to it. This is the rusting boiler of the SS Michigan, a steam schooner that piled onto rocks in 1892. Forty miles of this coast are said to have one wreck for each mile, and the name Graveyard of the Pacific is applied here, as it also is on the coast of the Olympic Peninsula. The lighthouse is one of 12 along the west coast of Vancouver Island. All were built in the 1800s. We've been hearing the foghorn of the one at Patina Point for some time, and now we ask Mrs. Milne, the head keeper's wife, if we may climb the tower. to the top. There, Jack Rusk, assistant keeper, shows us the light. He explains it's only a 400 watt mercury vapor lamp, but it's surrounded by thousands of glass prisms, which are mounted on a turret that revolves in a trough of mercury. The prisms bounce the light beam from surface to surface and intensify it a hundredfold. One hundred fifty feet below lies the storm-tossed sea. The foghorn is in a building at the water's edge. Its blast pattern belongs to Pacina alone. <laughs> 